In this video, guys, we're gonna show you how we actually fix this case. You know, previously, you could see when we die grinded it and opened up the hole, and we actually saw what was going on by removing all that horrible JB Weld silicone mess that was there uh, back to something usable like this. Like there's a lot of weld humped on this case, layers and layers and layers. But when you're dealing with old aluminum, uh, it's, it's really hard to get rid of all the oil and everything that's been put into this case over the years. But this is how we did it. Well guys, we're on the way back from the machine shop and we got the case pretty much ready to go or ready to weld. We had to machine off a whole bunch of stuff and go ahead and, and rebuild basically that whole kickstart shaft. So we'll show you guys some more when we get back to the shop. So this is what we came up with for the fix. We've made an aluminum slug that's the perfect diameter for the kickstart shaft. So we'll be able to put that in. We've machined a recess into the bottom here to have this, uh, this plug sit down in there flush so it can be welded from the inside and the out. I'll show you the back side. So that hole has been machined. And you can see the porosity in this old material, which is pretty much gonna evaporate away as soon as we try and weld it. So I just want you guys to get another look. It's pretty much flat. So we're gonna be able to take all around there and get her set in. We've got the cases done. Hopefully they don't leak. We're going to do a dye penetrant test on these. Uh, I'll show you how that's done so you guys can see how to tell if, uh, if your weld worked or if it didn't. So first step for us guys in this scenario, we're going to apply a developer. So what the developer does is basically we'll turn this area of the case white and we're going to be looking at the weld we did around this uh, bolt hole that was cracked, cracked on the inside as well. We're going to put the die pen around the weld on the inside and if it leaks through we'll see red come through. Hopefully it doesn't leak. Uh, fingers crossed I guess. I haven't tested it yet. If it does then we'll have to take it back and try again. So rather um, than try and support it any other way we've got the bottom covered with the developer which is basically like a white paint kind of chalky substance and we've put a little bit of the dye pen which is a really red dye it is water soluble it's not going to hurt the motor or anything like that and we're going to dab it around the weld uh, you can spray it out of the aerosol can the problem is is that if it um if you miss and get it it's hard to tell where it's going to be so we'll let that sit and within 20 minutes you'll know right away if you got a leak or not so it looks like we have a little pinhole, guys. Let me show you. So this is what you see if you have a hole. So just right close to those threads, I guess there's a small speck. I was trying to check to make sure it didn't like leak down the threads. And I don't think it did. I think it is one small little, little pinhole. We'll have to add a little bit more weld and get that fixed up. So I just want to show you guys. Now, when we had this machined, it was a perfect fit, but obviously when we weld it, it shrinks. So it, it's just tight. Like I might be able to drive it in, but then it wouldn't spin. So what we're going to do is just open it up a little bit with a Dremel until the uh, shaft fits, just barely. What we're having a problem with is we've got the top really nice, perfect fit, but we need to get down to the bottom so that our 
Our thing will, will reach all the way. There is a bit of a taper on here, which is good, but we're gonna extend our bit a bit, <laughs> extend our bit out, and then uh, we'll be able to reach into the bottom. Well, we've got it all reassembled the way it would work. <clears throat> it looks like it will work just fine. Still free wheels, doesn't rub anywhere. Looks like the gear is going to hit perfect. Yeah, that'll work just fine. So now that we know that none of the weld is going to interfere and our shaft drops in and functions properly after testing it, we're going to go ahead and do a die pen on this area and see if there's any other things that maybe we've caused after sanding it open a little bit. So that way we know 100% if it leaks or not. Make sure we get lots down in any kind of little crack or crevice. Just like that. So the developer's got a chance to set in on the other side. We're just gonna give it a little shot. This stuff really comes out. That's plenty, plenty. And it's gonna sit in there and if there's a hole, it'll show up on the other side. We'll come back in a bit and take a look. We've got a pile of parts, all the engine parts, and we're gonna put them in the parts washer and give them a good scrubbing. And the reason we have to wash all these parts is because in this bike, it was so full of silicone, uh, there's chunks of silicone in all of the transmission. So I wanna wash them off and rinse them really good in the parts washer, get rid of all the grease and everything else that was holding any of those little silicone pieces. And we're just giving it a rinse, brushing it out, Brushing it out. The parts washer really does uh, make easy work of a lot of this built up grease. If you let the parts soak in, in your parts washer, then you can uh, easily deal with all the grease and whatnot. What we're gonna do is lay a bunch of stringer beads across and build this area up. And then we're gonna have to grind it all off. I see like an older weld that somebody probably did on this frame a long time ago here. We're gonna probably touch it up and fill any of the low spots that are in this frame so we can grind them off so it'll look perfect after it's uh, sandblasted. Let it cool off a little bit and we'll keep building and then we'll shape it back to normal. Yeah, that looks really good. We're just looking at the frame rails turn this piece so we can see it a little better there was a large dent here and then a really horrible setup up here so you guys can see that looks a million times better uh, we filled in the low spots and really buffed her out smooth there's obviously some nicks from over the year i'm not on this bike i am not going to fill every rock ding and everything but we've got the major uh portion of it out and it's really gonna help this uh, frame of Project 93 here come together. So it's actually the next day. We went and left this overnight because uh, we got busy and doing a bunch of things. But let's take a look and see if she leaked. So as you guys can see, there's absolutely no bleed through of the die pen on this side of the case. So that setup is really good. Well, surprisingly, it's all done and the case doesn't leak. So I was a little worried. I didn't think it was gonna happen. We ended up hitting all sorts of horrible oil that was soaked in these cases. You can bake them and try and bake it out, 
but it's still, this is a, this is a, a 93. So this thing has seen a lot of oil and a lot of abuse, obviously from the other videos, but it's fixed and we're going to be able to reuse this case, which is pretty remarkable. Um, also the frame was able to get touched up. As you guys could see, we really smoothed it out. So once this goes for sandblast, it'll be able to get the powder coat and really look like a brand new frame. Our next step is going to be mating these cases, putting them back together, truing them, making sure the surfaces are perfectly flat. So it doesn't end up with a silicone JB weld mess like it was before. But anyway, guys, if you like the video, like, and subscribe and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys would have tried to do. Or if you think that the way we did it was a, a good way, or if there, you think there was a better way to do it, you know, it's when you start seeing problems like this, you got to try and come up with solutions. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching guys. And we'll see you in the next one.